Hello, I've done something completely out of my comfort zone. My comfort zone is somewhere over there at the moment. Uh, I've come to a car museum and I'm talking in front of... Well, there's no one here at the moment, but you have to take my word for it, I was. This is the Great British Car Journey. It's a museum up north. Where are we again? Dar Derby. Somewhere near Derby. And um, basically, this is quite a cool place. So it's an entirely British collection of cars. But the difference with some of these is they've got a thing here, a feature called Drive Dad's Car. I don't know why it's Dad's Car. It, maybe it's Mum's as well. Um, but you can pay money and you can drive these cars around their little private course here, which is unique. I don't know of any other museums that do that. There are a lot of cars in here. I've not really looked at any of them, but I need to go in and find a favourite. But before I do that, I'm going to drive three cars and there'll be three different videos. This is the intro that will go on each video. So you'll see this intro three times and that'll be really boring. One of the cars you might know, the other two you won't. So yeah, that's it. End of message. So I'm starting this video in this next car, uh, which is one of the crown, crown well, jewels in the crown at Great British Car Journey. They love this thing. Um, it's an Austin 7 Ruby. 1937 I think this is by far the oldest car I've ever driven well I haven't driven it yet so that's a bit after what's happened with the imp that might be a bit premature but I've just got it running figured out how to start it lovely smooth little engine and this is one of the first cars that has conventional controls like up until this point so I'm just loving the way that engine sound up until this point cars had um, you know, all sorts of different layouts. M look how you drive a Model T, for example. This, I can see the floor through the clutch pedal. Um, this is uh, conventional, three pedals in a normal position. The wiper isn't conventional. How cool is that? I think you can open the window, which I might need to do a little bit. You can open the window with the wiper going. How cool is that? I'm just trying to like stop it steaming up. Right. Oh Christ. Oh bloody hell. Oh, no. The hell? Got all the way in. Yeah, yeah, that's right. That's not, and again. Right down. And again, that's it. Oh, it's got a bit on the end. Yeah, and that's your bite as well. So when you bring it a few mil. So is she sharp? Yeah. Right. That's embarrassing. Right. This especially this is one of their favourite cars. Oh wow, that is that is sharp. <laughs> so I've never driven a pre-war car. And now I have. Bloody hell, <laughs> it's all over the place. Oh look, there's another car, it's like we're driving around in the 40s. Oh, it's going for another gear. I guess there's no heater fan either. There's someone walking up here. I'm going to end up killing them. Has this got indicators? I guess not. I guess you just hang your hand, arm out the window. What's the performance like? Well, anyway... I mean, yeah, <laughs> it's a bit overwhelming, to be honest with you. It's nothing like. I need to do some, do a couple of laps to get used to it, I think. It's got a fixed hub steering wheel. Like a Citroen C4. I'm guessing it's only got three gears, I'm not going to go for another one. Oh, 
what's this guy doing? Oh, he's going down there. Part of me doesn't want to drive back down past the car park because I don't want them to see me struggling to drive it and mock me. But at the same time, I'm trying to do the whole... I want to do the whole lap. Oh God, it's popped out of gear. Oh, there's Hubnut, another YouTube channel. Oh God, let's go this way. Okay, that's flat out. But I suppose it is quicker than a horse. Um, can you, oh, you can open the window. Oh. Oh, that might help. Oh, you can't open that one. I can't see. Nineteen thirties motoring. I need to drive a traction to see how that compares. I'm guessing it'll be a lot more advanced. Oh, that's third gear. There we go. I'm getting the hang of it. I don't know how to turn the lights on. I'm gonna have to figure it out. Oh, they've got all their lights on there, they've got all three of them on. Some shifty characters. I think once you get the hang of it, it's not too bad. But it's a, it's a real, oh, slips off the pedal. It's a real shock to the senses, like it's nothing like you think it's going to be it's just look at that it's just wandering it's like driving a shopping trolley it's just wandering around all over the place but it's got skinny wheels they're wire wheels it's, got, it's really old tech you forget how old this car is this car will be well in 13 years time this car will be 100 years old i'm trying to figure out how to put the lights on oh that is them there you go I don't know if I was changing the ignition timing or something. Um, oh, it's savage clutch. It's got a paddle clutch in it, like a race car. Oh, it's raining inside as well, to shut that. Um, yeah, it's... Uh, I mean, the Austin 7, I don't know anything about them. I've deliberately gone into this researching nothing and knowing nothing because I wanted to attack it from a kind of neutral point of view. I know how significant this car is and how significant it was to British motoring. So I wanted to go into it completely, what's the word? I, want, I wanted my cherry intact. see what this is like compared to a modern car because one of the things that's different about this car is that well not different it's the same this car the controls in this car are conventional so you look at like model t's and all the old stuff from the 20s and early 30s you could know, go you had like the throttle was on the steering wheel and the gear shift was one of the pedals and this isn't this is three pedals clutch brake throttle Gear, gear lever I thought was something weird, but it wasn't. It's just a little indicator thing has spun round. It is. It's a standard layout. So if you can drive a Ford Fiesta, you can drive this. And it was one of the first cars to have that, to normalise it. Do you know what this car is? This car is four foot eight. I don't mean the size, I mean 
four foot eight was the gauge of railways. That's the standard gauge. And back before all the railways got going, all the different railway companies had different sized tracks. So you couldn't take a train from one end of the country to the other because it wouldn't fit. And eventually someone said, this is stupid. You should all have to have the same size track and then everyone can use it. And that's what these pedals are. I'm just trying to think of things to say to stop me getting out of the car, to be honest, because it's raining. And at the time, um, this car saved Austin. It's a bit like a BX, really, isn't it? No? It, it saved Austin. It's uh, They sold so many of these. I don't know how many they sold, because like I say, I deliberately haven't researched anything. But I'll put the number on the screen below. You can see how many they actually sold. But yeah, these are everywhere, and they're still everywhere now. There's quite a few of these about, and they're not expensive. And that's one of the things that worries me a little bit, is the value of classic cars is kind of governed by nostalgia, and by, you know, people yearning to have, oh Christ, people yearning to have something they had when they were younger. Well, who had one of these when they were younger? They're all dead now. So I worry that, Oh, it's done it again. You can't go downhill in second because it just pops out. Um, yeah, I'm, I, I worry that who's going to pick up the baton for these? I mean, this one's landed in good hands, but there's so many out there that got sold. Where are they all? Who's got them all? Yeah, I don't know. It's a bit... A bit of a worry, really. Um, right, yeah, because the weather is so awful i mean it is horrendous I, I just feel bad for this car so i've brought it back in under this shelter here um i wanted to show you around it really around the outside but yeah it's just so wet out there so yeah i thought i'd show you inside the car hopefully with a torch on the phone just so you can get a rough idea um because it's it's just yeah you can't do it out there so yeah there we go that's um that's the cabin it is cozy uh, this was a family car back in the day but well you could get a family in the back there i mean your headrest is your the back of the car basically um it's a, yeah, it's a nice cozy little thing though you can imagine like pulling up to a drive-in cinema in the back there can't you then you can't remove the front seats but yeah standard pedals throttle on the right brake in the middle people who moan about uh citroen sexo driving pedal positions try driving this and then shut up it's quite cool, I mean, as I say, you've got this fixed hub wheel to start it, it's ignition on, make sure it's in neutral, and then just, it's got a puller on it. It's a lovely sweet little engine, actually. Um, gearbox, I think it's a three speed. This thing keeps moving. Oh no, it's a four speed. I've done it dirty. You've got more gears than my SM. Um, handbrake is this awesome little like signal box lever love that it's a lovely little thing really you want to get in twist the handle and if you want to get out you pull the rope there might be a boot but I have no idea I think you have to well, I don't know what you do Guessing there's a boot, fuel filler, little wire wheels, little diddy little things, little three stud wire wheels. But yeah, I'd love to keep driving this and really like get get better with it, you know. But it's just not fair on the car. I'm probably going to park it up now um, because it's just yeah, it's just not fair on the car to keep doing this. It's the weather's awful. It's not doing the car justice. Um, so the best thing you can do is come down yourself and drive it because i can't explain to you what that thing's like but from my point of view as a complete novice someone who knows nothing about these sort of cars i've never driven anything like anything as old as that before i think the oldest car i've driven up to this point was a frog eye sprite 1960 frog eye sprite i've driven a mark ii jag but this yeah it's um it's totally different but it's it's actually quite charming quite endearing Love to have a day with one. If you had a day and you could like drive around pretending how they used to be in the in the thirties, that would be awesome. But uh, right, I'm going to park it up and put it out of its misery.